without us having to expend money, taxpayer money, to provide to get something that I think should just be sent. Because if you're following the contract, send us invoices. And then if you are, cool. And if you're not, then we then we need to have discussion. Um, again, the ones that I've seen, but I only have a small sample. Um, there was the court case, the February 28th, 29th, the auto owners that was shown in that particular case, the contract's not followed. Sure. Um, the uh, letter that was sent to one of the letters that they are doing did request that they provide invoices for a period of time for a whole year. Um, it was in response to that letter that Barry and Tony said you should have someone from the city come over and review the records here, but they did not produce any invoices. But that was requested. We don't have the ability to do a FOIA request to Barry and Tony because they're not a governmental entity. We can't. Um, issue them a subpoena for those records because, you know, uh, we're not suing them over the contract. So our, our hands are kind of tight if they say they're not going to provide the invoices. There's not a lot we can do about it. So, Chairman, I'll just say that that will be, at least from my standpoint and the RFQ that we issue, that, that it will be a stipulation. Of, of, of course, the, the committee and the council agrees that future contracts require that because there needs to be oversight. I know in some cities, Anything outside the normal contractual rates has, has to go to the chief of police for approval, right? So different cities have different mechanisms for approval, uh, but there are anomalies, right? I mean, you're going to write a contract for the majority of accidents, majority of incidents, and there's going to be those outliers that you can't write into the contract, right? And you could be have a provision for that. Uh, many cities do.
does happen from time to time. Okay. From what I was told is, if that happens, like say if a truck goes down and they decide, okay, to recycle and stuff, if they determine that that truck is going to do both, that truck goes to another location before it goes to the dump and it is separated. So they have like uh, big buildings that they go in and they'll dump it in there and then they'll go through and pull out all the recycled. This, this is what I've been told. But it does happen from time to time. Um, I did see a video one time, I think quite a while ago, but they did show me the process. So um, it, it does happen usually when a truck goes down or something like that or if there's short manpower that day or something. But as a whole, they try not to do it because it takes more time for them to separate it. So that's that's what I was told. That's what they do that on that occasion. Chairman. Council. Go ahead. No, have you been, has the call center been getting calls about that too? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but okay. I, can, I can double check. Thanks, Chairman. My question to that would be, how are we built then? Because we're built right on Aren't we built two different rates for a normal garbage pickup and then the recycling? I think that's part of it's it. Been a while they're since. still picking up recycle and then they're separating it, so technically it's still like, yeah, it's something else. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I hope that that's accurate that they do that because yeah, so a lot of times I'm trying to do my recycling. The, through the chair, I wanted to make sure that they weren't snowing. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> to be honest, I haven't seen that occur. There's, there's three it's different very, it doesn't, like I said, they, they try not to do it, but it does happen. Because I did receive a call, I think it was last year, and I asked them, and they said that's the, the occasion of something if a truck breaks down or something, mm -hmm. they'll do that. But those trucks go specifically to a designated area, and then they sort the bags from the recycle. So I had actually reached out to, uh, to Mr. Rufenberg mm -hmm. um, because things went so smoothly this year. If you remember last year <laughs> with the spring? So uh, I think the next uh, meeting will be bringing uh, the one year 3% increase because our, our garbage is coming up. But I don't know if you guys saw that uh, Priority did purchase GFL. Um, they, they don't own the name, but they own all their assets. So the workers and the trucks are now going to become Priority. So um, we've been having preliminary talks. Um, there's not a lot of companies out there right now. So. Um, this year we're going to, if you guys approve it, we'll do the 3% increase, which is in the contract. But after talking with them, because of how much everything's gone up, they did notify me that this would be the last year of that, because they do. So they're giving me a good, you know, that way we'll continue to have talks. I will come with, to you with some ideas, and then we will go from there. Right. So hopefully that won't affect our city, you know, maybe being stretched to... Through the chair, I don't believe so. Run into the, the CEO last week, and um, he told me the news. I hadn't heard at that point, and the first thing out of his mouth is, 